Awesome. So I love, this is actually a really, really um, fun interview because um, one of my things uh, is that I just love sharing messy beauty because we know <laughs> that our, our lives are, you know, messy. And I love that, um, I love that your littles are there, are there with you. And uh, for our listeners, I actually have a puppy. And so we're both like trying to <laughs> handle, handle our, our peeps and then, yeah. and then talk about these things. And I think, I actually think that, um, that reminds me of, of exactly what you do, um, about how you're writing about both. And I'm going to put your Instagram handle in here because I think everyone should follow it. And I love how you just show, you know, so much of your life, like motherhood, but also grief, but also this, cause we are all of those things. Yeah. And, um, it, I used to try and separate the things that I deal with from who I am and, and trying to figure out, was this reaction because of who I am or because of the situation? I'm just realizing so much more. It's, it, I can't spend this energy trying to like box each thing. Like, this is why you, do you know what I mean? Oh and, yeah. 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 And I can imagine, I love what you were doing um, on your blog about how you started um, This Is Motherhood too, And um, yeah, I had never seen anything like that in the blog world and the internet where it was sharing um, all the, the different experiences. And it's almost, it's a little bit of what I'm trying to do here about, um, you know, mental illness or grief or, or that kind of thing to normalize it so that we can talk about it because it's it happens and it you know it'll affect at least someone around us or if not us and um i love how you did that how did you get connected to um different uh, mamas or families that were dealing with um, medically fragile children um through this is motherhood too or just in general in general yeah yeah Honestly, through Instagram, um, like I still love blogging for certain things, but you know, it's, it's not as intimate as it used to be. Um, and so Instagram became, uh, I think it started out with following friends that also had children with spinal muscular atrophy. And then there was a period there where, um, a few of us who were closer lost our kids within the same year and actually within a few months of each other. Um, so, you know, it became like I lost Florence, I think. Yeah. And even some kids that didn't have spinal muscular atrophy, they had other genetic illnesses or something. Um, and it was like within six to 12 months, um, at least five of my friends from Instagram lost their kids. Wow. Um, and we were all sort of on the same journey, like doing the medical mom thing mm -hmm. and just like dealing with what we had to deal with. And then all of a sudden our kids all died. Um, and, you know, like I just started writing about it and that's where I started the mama grief hashtag because, you know, I was writing a lot and I was like, I, I wanted to like have something to call it or, mm -hmm. um, be able to, I don't know, I just felt so alone. And at that point, Instagram was still very much like a highlight reel. Yeah. Um, and so it was very isolating. And I'm like, I need to just put this out there. And I couldn't find, I found grief, you know, hashtag grief, bereavement, like all these different things, general things, but nothing specific to moms. I was like, they're not really talking about losing children. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're not really talking about um, losing kids because not other people don't want to hear that. Um, I love how you found community um, online. Um, I've, you always hear everyone goes off on the, the negative parts and there is that absolutely. Um, but uh, I know with she loves um, saved my life at times. And I know that 
Um, I prefer to look at things like how you talked about Instagram. Like, I think that it's so powerful. And I really think that you're a, a brave, groundbreaking um, a person. I just, it must have been scary to put it out there. Um, but uh, I love that you did. And I think um, it's changing uh, things for, for so many people. Um, I love how you found community um, online. Um, I've, you always hear everyone goes off on the, the negative parts and there is that, absolutely. Um, but uh, I know what she loves um, saved my life at times. And I know that um, I prefer to look at things like how you talked about Instagram. Like, I think that it's so powerful. And I really think that you're a, a brave, groundbreaking um, a person. I just, uh, it must have been scary to put it out there. Um, but uh, I love that you did. And I think um, it's changing uh, things for, for so many people. So you write about um, uh, post uh, part of that, but also how it manifested into, into PTSD. How did you know that you needed help with that? Like, how did you know, because you knew and you'd been living in the grief, but how did you know it was next level kind of postpartum? a dark time? Yeah, I mean, I still don't fully understand what PTSD is. I still think of it as like something soldiers have after war, but I also know that that's, they say that parents in situations with medically fragile children have that same PTSD of like surviving a war. Um, so I, I still am like, do I have, did I have that? Like, it doesn't seem, <laughs> I don't really, you know, like, I don't really want that label, but is that what I've struggled with? Um, I would say for sure, like there was a period there, um, but then it, it, the like fight or flight sort of stopped because Florence was not alive anymore and that we weren't in and out of the hospital. Like I kind of was like, okay, started to just relax. Um, and of course I got really tired of my pregnancy. So it was just a lot of like sleeping, not feeling great, staying at home and just kind of nesting. And in my head, it kept going over and over in my head, like something's not right with me. Like something, this isn't right how I'm feeling. Like I don't feel like myself. I, I, it was like I could feel that missing piece, you know, where like the anxiety just came in and was like, and made this new pathway. And I could just feel it carving into my brain. Like something's not right, something's not right. Something isn't working in my brain. Like I can't cope with this. Like I keep thinking these thoughts and then it just got to like, I keep thinking these thoughts and I want them to stop and I want them to stop and maybe I should just like, this isn't worth it. What am I doing? Why have I done this to myself? Like it, it, it could st just got so dark so fast. Mm. And of course on the outside, I'm like, this is my baby and I'm nursing him and I'm happy. Um, and then it just came to the point where I got really sick, um, which was again, three days or so, two, two days after birth, I just started coughing so hard to the point where like I was coughing all over him and that triggered a whole wave of anxiety where it's like, I shouldn't be getting a newborn this sick. Whatever I have is a bad virus and I can't even stop coughing and to protect him. And it just, it got out of control. Um, so, you know, I, felt like I think everything I had constructed like life is okay now and we're having another baby and he's healthy and we're gonna be okay it all just started to crumble and it was all triggered by some sort of sickness or some sort of you know um could have been a minor thing for someone who hadn't gone through what I'd gone through right. um but it was like, I had probably three or four triggers that were, would have scared a new mom anyways, but really scared me. Wow. And the fear just kept coming in like a wave, just oh. sweeping out whatever I tried to build up. Um, whatever I tried to pray away, it just swept away all these things, all of my strength, basically. And I just, I knew it in my head immediately. Like, 
I don't think I can do this. Like, I, I don't remember being like this with Teddy or with Florence. I had always such great postpartums with them. And that's so why I knew because I was looking forward to the postpartum because I don't enjoy being pregnant. And yeah. so when it came, I was like, this is not how I remember it. And I don't think my brain is working properly. And why am I so afraid? And, and then the physical stuff started to set in where I couldn't catch my breath. And I, it was, you know, I was also really sick. I had some sort of chest infection that went undiagnosed. And so it kind of just sat there for a long time, you know? Mm. Um, and so then it was like, well, one of the doctors said, you know, you could have a mild form of asthma and a, <laughs> bless his heart. He just planted that little seed in there for the next year. I would just be tortured by that. Um, I wish there was like some sort of badge you could wear to an emergency room. Like I have had PTSD. I have medical anxiety. Please do not use these trigger words around me. You know, like, right? he just was like, Oh, it could be asthma. And like, I was like, can you just develop asthma? Like all of a sudden, like in pregnancies, like it can happen. It's not very common, but he just, was not good at like reading wow. my body language and knowing yeah. that I, I had a, a baby outside literally because I was like don't bring Rory in here right toxic and I'm terrified yeah. of but I was like my baby's three days old <laughs> like, yeah he just didn't get it wow. um so he just kind of kept speaking these words over me thinking he was giving me knowledge and information and that's exactly what I didn't need right um and yeah, it wasn't until I started um, medication like eight months later that I realized like, oh, it's not asthma. It's just anxiety. Um, right. And it wasn't even that the shortness of breath when I would get triggered went away. It was that the medication just allowed me, my brain to go, it's okay. Look at, you're just feeling stressed right now. And this is how your body's reacting. Like mm -hmm. it, it almost, it just filled in that piece that I couldn't pull together myself. Yeah. So I was still feeling anxiety and stress, but it was like, oh, okay, you are such a strong, brave woman. You've been through a lot. Like your body is just reacting and it's not mm -hmm. going to be like this forever. And, and I could walk myself through it. Um, but man, that shortness of breath, it was like, it was torment. I mean, they put me on puffers and I was like, do I need these? I guess I should be on these. Yeah. And then I started getting side effects from those. And then when mm -hmm. I would have any sort of stronger panic, I would use a puffer. And of course, Ventolin is a, you know, rescue. Like, yeah. so when my lungs were feeling really tight, it kind of helped, Yeah. but not really. <laughs> it was yeah. such a bizarre, like, I just felt like I was in a fog like no I, I couldn't explain to people like I I it was oh my gosh I I was still sort of angry about it that it wasn't handled the right way where someone should have just sat me down and been like listen the chances that you develop asthma are really slim like um you know I, I was like can I just do a test to see if I have asthma and they're like yeah but you can't be breastfeeding I'm like oh great so I'll just suffer for the next year and a half while I breastfeed my, like it was yeah. just, it just, nothing seemed to be working out. So they're like, you just have to stay on your puffers. I'm like, but what if I don't need them? Like, what if this is just stress? And then I finally asked, like, do people come in here with anxiety to your like lung clinic at, you know, the hospital, like with just anxiety? And she's like, oh yeah, all the time. I'm like, so do you think that could be me? She's like, it could be, but we can't rule it out. You know, they like, can't tell you like, so I just kind of had to figure it out for myself. Yeah. And, um, now I feel like I've learned so much yeah. and I also I'm like wow body you are really good at giving cues to the point where it's terrifying like you know people I know people go like I went to the ER it, it wasn't that I thought I was having a heart attack but it kind of was like I felt like someone was sitting on my chest and yeah. when I would lay down yeah I wasn't like I'm having a heart attack but even now as I talk about it I'm like oh my god maybe I was <laughs> feeling like something was wrong with my heart and that's why I went to the ER and right. you know you, I read all these memoirs or whatever you hear about people that take themselves to the ER um and they just think it's some sort of random event that's happening in their body and yeah. um again unfortunately I didn't have a doctor in there that said honey like 
do you think you're having a panic attack? Have you ever had a panic attack before? Um, are you feeling anxious? Like no one said anything like that. They were like, oh, your heart rate's really irregular. Your pulse is really high. And I was like, oh God. Yeah. And they're like, let's get you into an MRI and the, or a CT oh. scan and an X-ray and a, uh, oh my gosh. They put me through the ringer. And I think part of it was because I was in immediate postpartum. So they do have to rule out like these yeah. embolisms that can happen. And of course that's where I went to my brain. Yeah. Um, so just, it was just like, one thing after the other where I wasn't getting the help. I wasn't getting someone saying here, it could be this, but it could be this too. Yeah. Um, and I remember one person I talked to said, listen, like she had had anxiety um, and she was sort of involved in the birth world. She's a doula and stuff. She's like, I don't think it's asthma. I think it's probably just anxiety and it's going to get better. And if, if I had to choose for you, if it was asthma or anxiety, I hope it's just anxiety. And she, this is coming from a girl who had like multiple panic attacks, suffered with anxiety for almost her whole life. And she's wow. like, you want it to be anxiety, not asthma, because it's going to get better and you can wow. treat it and it will go away yeah. at one point. And I was like, okay, I yeah. kind of want asthma. <laughs> like, because yeah. it was so intense, you know, I was like, I don't want, I can't do this. I can't live like this. Yeah. And then now that looking back, I'm like, oh okay you did it like and I can see now now it, it's almost like that anxiety like I'll still every so often get if I'm even if it's just stress like traffic I'm like okay whoa just take a deep breath you know that this is anxiety now and it's like the monster has just been like totally deflated wow and I can call it out whereas before I had no idea I was not equipped I'd never had panic attacks I'd never had that kind of anxiety I was not equipped with the language to say yeah that's anxiety and it's just anxiety. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to take your breath away. Like it's not going to give you a heart attack. It's anxiety and you can call it what it is. And I, I just didn't have that language till like a year or so later. Yeah. And, and don't you find like, I think that's why it took so long to diagnose me as well is because I feel like you know, a lot of medical community is generalist. I try and think of it like I'm a substitute teacher, like, but then I go into grade seven math and I'm like, eh! right. And I feel like with how much, and like the more you talk to people, the more anxiety is out there, the more um, different things. I just, I'm hoping that there can be more trauma um, training. Like you said, like if that doctor would have known yeah. how much different your experience would have been. And actually, I know you were saying like, oh, a sticker, but actually that's somewhat genius because it's kind of like, you know, you can hand out a card if you're a child or if you are on the spectrum, like yeah. on an airplane or whatever. So people are more understanding. Yeah. Wow. That just, well, and I, I just do that now. Like whenever yeah. I call like the 811 in BC, that's the nurse's hotline. Yeah. I just tell them, I'm like, listen, my son has this weird fever or whatever it is. He ate a mushroom in the backyard. And I just yeah. want to tell you, I, my, I lost my daughter. I've, um, she died when she was three. So please don't say anything. I know you have to say like yeah. all these things, but like, I just want you to know. So you're aware I have some medical anxiety. So please don't like scare me yeah <laughs> you know? be careful with your words right yeah um yeah and I'll, i've done that in walk-in clinics too like um you know because they want to tell you this is what you should look for and i'm like i'm gonna hear only that yeah. and i'm gonna be on high alert looking for my yeah. son foaming at the mouth <laughs> yeah day yeah. which is probably not gonna happen but like i know you have to say that but just be super casual about it. Yeah. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. Like, yeah. and I, cause I just, I know that now and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm like, like I've been through some medical trauma that like, yeah. you have no idea what that's like. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I'm like, I got to tell people for my own safety. And there's times where I don't, where I'm like, I feel okay. And this is just a normal part of motherhood. Yeah. Um, and as time goes on more and more, I'm like, this is just normal. Other moms go through it. Um, and yeah, in fact, my kids are relatively healthy. Like we haven't had many scares and, you know, like my son cut his eye open on my Florence's birthday this year. So I literally was in the middle of grieving and sobbing, holding a picture of her. And he falls on the stairs, busts his eye open. And he does that weird noise, you know, when they're really hurt and they're like, what? And I, he's just 
his eyelid is just like flapping open and I was like <laughs> wiping the tears off and like oh yeah. god here we go oh. and I just I like shoved a piece of toast in my mouth because I hadn't eaten anything and like you're I know you're gonna get really tired and you're gonna feel really sick to your stomach and you might want to feel like you're gonna throw up do you need to eat something and I was just literally like putting the bread in my mouth chasing it with water swallowing it like it's gonna be okay this is wow. normal you know how many of your friends have had to take their kids in for stitches or like yes. nothing's happening right now that's out of the ordinary yeah. like this is a normal kid thing and you know and then I was starting to recall things my like my mom had said like Oh, I was in the ER with you kids all the time, breaking your arms, busting your face open. And like that reel came back into my yeah. brain where I was like, okay, my mom's done this. And all my friends, I think almost all my friends have been in the hospital with their kids. Like, this is okay. This is just a normal part of it. Like, let's just embrace this for what it is, you know? Yeah. And you could so get that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I was kind of thankful for it. Like that was the first emergency trip I'd made with my kid. Wow. Both of them. Yeah. Since Florence. And it was like, look, you did it. Wow. Okay. Like, I, I'm glad it happened. You know, like, yeah. I'm really actually glad it happened because it showed me like, I didn't have any anxiety or panic, you know, like, yeah. I mean, it did come later, but it, I expect that now, like, oh, my stomach feels kind of weird. Like, I can't yeah. really eat dinner tonight, but I feel okay mentally. It's just my body's still like, like I'm yeah. afraid, I'm afraid. And then you know, my brain is caught up and it's like, my body is still just has stored some of that trauma. And it's just like, okay, you're okay, body. And you know, you're feeling what you're going to feel. And I can't stop that. That's the scary thing with anxiety. Sometimes you can't stop your heart racing or your breath being yes. short, or your stomach feeling nauseous. So it's like, that's where for me, the anxiety got crazy. Cause I was like, but I feel fine. My brain is fine. And then my brain would connect with my body. And, and I was like, but I don't feel fine because why is my body acting this way? And why is my heart racing? Like, yeah. Like I thought, I thought this should, like, I don't understand, you know, and it, it like, it's just, there's so much unknown. Like if you haven't experienced anxiety before and a lot of it is like the fear of the anxiety, not even the, the medical issue or the, whatever it is, like it's all it becomes like, I'm afraid of the anxiety now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Learning, having those tools, like going to the hospital again and, and walking through normal things and coming out the other side is, is really, really helpful for me. Yeah. I was really powerful. What you said is that, you know, like you said, you know, it would come later, or you know, those things. And I remember it was a huge aha moment to me in therapy when, um, like, I kind of thought I would like arrive or like, I would be not so much miraculously healed, but I would just, you know, as time would go by, it would, um, you know, either go away or I would conquer it or, or, or that kind of language. And I remember she said, think about you're in a tiny room in a, in a pool and there's a beach ball and the beach ball is coming at you. You can bang it away. What's going to happen? I'm going to come back and hit you. You can push it right under and what's eventually going to happen. And she oh, said, yeah. what if you let it float around and it's going to bump into you? And, and then it's going to float around. It's going to move away and then come back. And that small visual analogy to me was like, okay. Like that's really like, good. I know. Right. And because if you let the beach ball float, it actually is way less intense and it's barely going to touch you. It's still going to touch you, but it's not going to like smack you in the face. You know, right? it's like it's there. It's floating around. Yeah. Oh, and it wow. was like, and I've, done a lot of therapy and I that one thing really stuck with me and so like I can even visualize and I'm like oh hey beach ball like you need to chill <laughs> right and um and like you said when you if you don't know these things and that's why I'm so um inspired and grateful that in the school system like our kids are going to grow up with tools and recognition and language that we didn't have yeah and still uh, you know don't have um wow that's really powerful.